Welcome to Multicare EA Nose and Throat Clinic. And today we'll be talking about functional endoscopic sinus surgery in an adult with sinonasal polyposis. Series 7. DS is 47 years old who complained of purulent nasal discharge, headache, inability to smell, weakness. Examination revealed purulent nasal discharge with engorged turbinate. This is a CT scan. You can see opacification and isodense laser in the next max larry sign. And again, you can see mucosal thickening of the left maxillary sinus with mucosal thickening of both ethmoids and engorged inferior turbinate. You can see a complete isodense lesion obstructing the left maxillary sinus, mucosal thickening of the ethmoids, and mucosal thickening of the right maxillary sinus. Now, this is a polypoidal lesion in the left. Sphenoid sinus. Now, this is an interoperative view of the left nasal cavity. You can see engorgement of the inferior tub and then engorgement of the right inferior turbinate, hyperemia of the mucosa. Now we're lateralizing the inferior turbinate and we can see the nasal pharynx there. With some secretion, the eustachian tube, the middle turbinate with a small concha bullosa. We are now medializing the middle turbinate on the septum to create space for the surgical operation. Now we decided to compress that small. Concha bullosa, since on the CT it shows that it's not a disease cell, and we can see the onset process laterally. And now that's the grand lamella, and that's the bulla et modale, the onset process laterally. Now this outlining the inverted onsenate process that is the hiatus seminaris inferioris the bullite modality the edematous onsenate process being highlighted now we begin the process of the left medium metal antrostomy using a backbiter to create an onsenotomy at the next point We keep biting until we reach hard bone, which will highlight the region of the nasolacrimal duct, which we don't want to go into. So when you feel the hard bone, you stop. Now we're using a ball probe to fracture the horizontal portion of the onsenate person. And that is exposing the region of the infundibulum. And we use a 45 degrees black slit forcer to remove the bony chip from the horizontal push. And we use a rat 40 micro debrider to debride the remnants of the onsenate person. And in this instance, we can see the inferior medial border of the bullite model obstructing the region of the infundibulum. So we have to debride it in order to create adequate surgical space to create a wide antrostomy. Now we can see the mucosa of the leg maxillary sinus in the region of the four o'clock position. You can see it's highly edematous and becoming polypoidal. That's the mucosa there. 
intact and yellowing and polar powder. Now we use a 45 degree spoon cooler to invert the onsenate process. I will use it to also dissect out the egg is also. Now we use a 45 degrees black slice forcep to avoid the vertical portion of the onset process with attached remnants of the egg and on the soil. We use a red 40 red micro debrider blade to define the region of the laminar paparicia. And it's always a good thing to see the laminar purpose at the beginning of the surgery so that you can avoid injury or perforation. That is the axilla of the middle turbine and that is the hard bone of the frontonasal beak. Now we're debriding away the remnants of the egg on is also. And as we debride it, it gives us a view into the left frontal sinus os. Now we use a rhinoid blade to dissect more of the area of the anterior fovea and that is the vertical attachment of the bulla et modale to the skull base. Now we use a right 120 blade to further explore the anterior fovea. You can see the edematous mucosa in the area of the attachment of the bullite modality to the skull base. So you need a lot of caution in this place, preferably secure adequate humosity so as not to cause injury to the skull base with an inadvertent leakage of cerebrospinal fluid. So you cautiously divide that area Keep the briding gradually, and that is the skull base there. And we're now debriding the region of the anterior artery. So we're debriding the remnants of the bulla, and then we begin to debride the posterior etmoidal cell. And that's the laminar purpose bordered lateral. That's the disease mucosa of the posterior etmoidal cell. And you need to be careful at the roof of the etmoid here, yeah? in case the posterior etmoidal artery is also exposed. With the bright more of the posterior etmoidal cell and the attachment of the middle turbinate to the onsenate process at the region of the ground lamella. More debridement taking place, debriding the disease mucosa. Now that is the vertical attachment of the ground lamella to the skull base. Being debrided cautiously. That's the posterior model cell, the posterior fovea. Now we're heading towards the anterior fovea. Specifically towards the region of the anterior etmoidal artery. 
so you need to exercise a lot of caution and that's the anterior artery you can see it clearly there that's the anterior moidal artery the anterior moidal artery wants it now this is the posterior right moi and that is the sphenoid os so we take down the parsons range so as to gain access into the left sphenoidal os so widen the sphenoid os by completely debriding the parsons range And that's a clear view into the left sphenoid sinus. And now move to the flip side to the right side. Remember on the CT scan there was mucosal thickening with some slight obstruction of the osteomyelitis complex. Again, we middle the middle turbinate on the septum. That's the ground lamella, the bullite modalin. Once again, we do our onsenectomy using a backbiter. You keep cutting until you hit hard bone. And again, we use our ball pro to fracture the horizontal portion of the onsenate process so as to give us a clear view towards the infundibulum. And now we use the right 40 micro debrider blade to debride the remnants of the horizontal portion of the onsenate process. And that is the right maxillary sinus os. You can see the tomatoes mucosa, not as polypoidal as that of the left. We use a spoon curate once again to fracture out the vertical portion of the onsenate process. And we use a 90 degrees black slip fossa to avoid the horizontal portion of the onsenate person. And this gives us an excellent view into the surgical cavity. Once again, we follow the M line and identify the laminar preparation early in the surgery. And now that is the brightment of the aganesas cell and then we identify the hard frontonasal beak and posteriorly lies the right frontal sinus also so once you stay on the beak you are absolutely safe now that is the end of the beak and that is the frontal sinus source we are exploring. We debride away edematous mucosa and that is the frontal sinus os. Now use the radenoid blade once again to expose more of the right frontal sinus os and the frontal racer. Now at this stage we carefully identify the posterior table and follow it down 
towards the area of the anterior fovea and the anterior ethmoidal artery. Now we decide to make raw the area between the middle turbinate and the septum so that we can medialize the middle turbinate on the septum as you see much later. We irrigate the surgical cavity and then we inspect the surgical cavity that is the left maxillary sinus os the left ethmoidal cavity the nasopharynx down there and that is the sphenoid os there the frontal recess the frontal sinus area You can see the clear surgical film. I'll try to look out for bony spicule, bony remnant, disease mucosa. And you can see the surgical cavity is clear and clean. That's the anterior modal artery at the upper part of the view. The frontal sino, anterior fovea, posterior fovea, this is sphenoid sinus os the left maxillary sinus and the nasopharynx. Now on the right side, the inferior turbinate. The, the right maxillary sinus, the face of the bulla optimal, the grand lamella, the hiatus seminary superior, the right frontal sinus and the right frontal recess. Now on the left side, we also make raw the area between the middle turbinate and the septum so that we can medialize the left middle turbinate on the septum so as to create a clear surgical view for post-operative decrusting, inspection, and for adequate post-operative steroid nasal irrigation. And above all, it prevents potential lateralization of the middle turbinate, thereby occluding the surgical cavity, and can lead to post-operative synechia and recurrence of chronic rhinosinusitis. Now we use the suture medialization of the middle turbinate on the septum. Now you can see the surgical cavity, the middle turbinates are medialized on the septum and this gives a clear view for post-operative decrossment and makes the follow-up pretty easy. The right nasal cavity, the right ethmoidal cavity, the right maxillary sinus. Thank you for listening.